I'm sad, guys. I had a glass of water. I sat down in my chair. And, and, and the glass was, like, pretty full. It, it was pretty full. I sat down in my chair and just went... Pfft. Like, how did it happen? I don't know. Glass was in my hand. Next thing I know, it was like... Pfft. Glass did not shatter. It fell on my lap. You know, it did shatter, though, my heart because the water was everywhere. The water was literally everywhere. I spilled so much freaking water on the floor. It was like one of those things, like, after it happened, I sat here and I was like... Oh. That really just happened. Okay. Alright, this is... This is what I'll be cleaning up for the next... God knows how long. But yeah, I spilled water. It went all over myself. I don't even know why I'm telling you guys this. Let's let's just get into the video. All right, everybody. So the USFL has started, and I I was super hyped for this, guys, and. Well, you guys probably know the outcome if you're watching this video of the Maulers game and like that really just freaking broke me, but this is not the video for I'm gonna be making a separate video for that and we'll be making another separate video for Kirby Wilson. So stay tuned for that guys in the near future. I will get them out as quick as possible, but I also want them to be very well edited obviously and good quality of content. I'm not gonna rush through it or anything. You get what I'm saying. But basically, the USFL has begun, guys, and I've been waiting for this for two months. I mean, like, two, three months, something like that. I was super hyped for this, guys. You know it. I've been making videos. I'm not on the bandwagon. I've been making videos for it, like, for, like, probably, like, a month or two ago. Yeah, I was making videos on it, and now things are spicing up. It's week one. This is one week of 12, so it's going to be... I believe there's going to be like two playoff weeks and then, well, 10 regular weeks. So this is pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. And um, so without further ado, this is going to be like a whole entire wrap up of week one. Let's get into it. So we started off with night one, guys. This was Saturday and I was super hyped for it. It was the Generals and the Stallions. And this game ended up actually being pretty packed. I'll show some pictures up on the screen. But a lot more people actually showed up to it than I expected. I mean, it was a Stallions game, and they are in Birmingham. If you don't already know, guys, USFL will be playing, which I didn't know. I thought it was only going to be one stadium, but they explained it. There will be two stadiums in Birmingham, Alabama, and then the playoffs will be in Canton, Ohio. So that's actually kind of cool. So the playoffs, Canton, Ohio, and there's two stadiums that they're going to be using in Birmingham. Which the sad thing is it's all in Birmingham, so that really does favor the Stallions like a lot. They're going to get a lot of people showing up to their games. But basically, the Generals just lost to the Stallions 24-28, guys. I watched this game. It was a nail-biter. Sadly, I was cheering for the Generals, though, and then they ended up losing. Like They looked like they had it the whole entire game. And what I observed in Game 1 was that there was a multiple things different than what the NFL does. And I actually thought it was kind of cool how they weren't just completely trying to copy the NFL. And I feel like everyone just wants this to be a recreation of the NFL in some way. Like, oh, they have to compete with the NFL. No, they're their own brand. They're their own thing. And they're going to go be their own thing. And they've done a good job of being their own thing. And if you ask me, they had a, uh, they basically had a drone shot. So there were literally, it's, what it sounds like it's a drone that comes down it flew in and it basically filmed the players they only did it here and there but night one they did it like a lot and honestly i was talking to some other people they weren't too big fans of it i personally wasn't like the biggest fan of it either like it was super wobbly the camera angle sometimes like the players i feel like weren't really necessarily in the view so that camera angle is a little bit iffy um another my only other complaint would be that they actually did have the coaches like mic'd up or whatever. And um, so you could hear the coaches calling plays on live television. It was actually super cool. But here's the thing with that. Um, my only issue with it was I it would be fine if they had the coaches mic'd up like right before the play. Like we could hear the call, hear the coach communicating and everything. Like that was super cool in my opinion because you don't get to see that in the NFL. So this is like... This is like opening up new ideas and new options. They were testing out stuff. But 
my thing was that they kept the coach mic'd up to where sometimes the commentators when they would be t talking the coach would be talking so it'd kind of be a little bit clashing in my opinion too many voices speaking at once they should just have the coach talking right before the play and then the announcers during the play because that's the announcers jobs during the play and then obviously right before we play we want to be able to see like the coach call a play and everything but i do notice later on in the week they actually did fix that and they actually started using the drone less and less it feels like like i feel like they did not use the drone like as much as they did before and not only that i do feel like they fixed the coaches thing like i i feel like they played the coaches audio like right before the play and they, they seem like towards the end of the week one it seems like they got it more and more right so they, they were like they did a little bit of tweaking so night one i definitely forgave them for some of the issues there was but night one was awesome awesome turnout it was pretty cool um game two the philadelphia stars versus the new orleans breakers the stars just lost to the breakers 17 to 23 another close game um this i didn't this game i was in and out of um i had family over and i was getting ready to have family over and whatnot since it was easter so this game 17 to 3 um, I do know there's an interception that was pretty cool in it, so I watched a little bit here and there, but congratulations to the Breakers for a win. Gamblers versus Panthers. The Panthers literally had so many, I watched this game, they literally had so many opportunities to get right back into it, and the Gamblers, they held on, they won 17 to 12. So another close game, as you guys know, a lot of these games are close and actually nail biters, and that's a really good thing for the USFL, they're getting like these close games. Um, and sadly, the last one, I will be making a separate video because this is a separate rant. Um, I will be making a whole entire separate thing. The final game got postponed, guys. If you already know, on Sunday, Alabama was getting like a lot of rain and whatnot. There was lightning. So they actually delayed the first games of, um, on Sunday, on Easter Sunday. They actually delayed it. The, I believe it was the, uh... It was the Panthers or the Breakers that were supposed to play at 12. They were supposed to play at 12, but then they pushed it back to 1 p.m. Eastern time because they had to push it back because of rain. And the only issue with that is that they all play at the same stadium. So it literally delayed every single game later. So like the Maulers, we had an 8 p.m. game and we ended up playing, well, we would have been playing at 9 p.m. But right before the Maulers game, guys, if you don't already know, they postponed it because of rain and lightning. They postponed it to the next day. Because if you ask me, that had been ridiculous that they postponed it to like 10 p.m. So that was smart of them. Just move it till the next day at 7 p.m. And if you guys already know, the Bandits beat the Maulers. I'm not going to go on a rant about it. I'm trying not to. I'm really I'm, I'm really biting my tongue here. It was 17-3. to 3. Um, Bandits outplayed us. But I'm not going to say much on it. 17-3. to 3, We did lose. Um, so overall this week one was absolutely sick to me. I liked it personally. I liked it I think the USFL they did a good job at trying to Do other things that the NFL isn't doing and I think that's very cool in my opinion Because why like they're, they're not just doing stuff that they know that oh this works So let's just go copy what the NFL does. No, they actually went with different camera angles They went with different ideas and if their ideas didn't work or something, they tweaked it, it seems like, and they fixed it up. So I really like that, in my opinion. And after seeing week one, I really hope the USFL stays around. I mean, it really lived up to expectation. Like, night one, like, holy cow. There was a decent amount of people there night one, so good turnout. I'm sure they're happy about that, too. But all the other games, there was not many people. Could be because they were on Easter. The Maulers, I know, weren't on Easter, but they were planned to be on Easter. But a lot of those games, not a lot of people showed up to us just because I, it's in Birmingham. You know, who's going to watch Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh play, you know? It's Birmingham. I mean, personally, if I was in Birmingham, I'd, I'd want to go to all the games. I mean, it was pretty, seems pretty cool. But just to check it out, guys, this is pretty cool. Week one, I really enjoyed it. Um, let's look at some other stats. All right, guys, so we have Offensive Player of the Week. And if you guys are wondering where I'm getting all this stuff from, this is from the USFL's Instagram account. So they post all this stuff and give some updates on their USFL. So please go follow them, guys, because this is where I get all this stuff from. Offensive Player of the Year. Quarterback Jamar Smith for the Birmingham Stallions. Um, he really did pull through. I, I can't deny it. 
like even though like their defense could not stop the generals like at all so he was at least able to pull through and get his team to a win so i can't blame it i actually can't argue with this one running back mark thompson from the houston gamblers also got it i didn't watch i, I was in and out on that game too guys i didn't watch a lot a lot of it but i did see actually he did pretty good so i agree with that one too uh, another running back from the New Orleans Breakers, running back Jordan Elias. Um, I did not see much of this one. Again, guys, I'm sorry. But um, he probably does deserve it too, so clap it up for him. Um, Tampa Bay Bandits. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's a tight end. Shin... Shanae O'Grady. I'm going to pop it up on the screen, guys. You already know. So I, I don't think I pronounced that one correctly, but it's O'Grady. It's a tight end. I actually did obviously see him play, and they actually did pretty good. I cannot deny. So congrats to the Offensive Players of the Week. This is history if you think about it, because if the USFL sticks around, we're going to look back at this and like, oh, these were all the good players from literally the first week of the USFL. Okay, Defensive Players of the Week, and I 100% agree with this first one. Um, free Safety, she Shalom Lo Luani, Luani, Lu Shalom Luani, okay? I'm just going to say it's that. Um, he actually, he showed up in play. I'm not going to deny. I watched that game full way through and everything, guys. He really showed up and played. Um, I, I seen, I seen some impressive stuff from him. I'm pretty sure he got an interception, a tackle for loss, something like that. But he was all over the place on the field. If you guys seen it, he was like everywhere. Um, so who knows, maybe he'll get offered a contract if he keeps playing like that. Maybe he'll get offered a contract in the NFL one day. That's the cool thing with these guys is that they can get contracts in the NFL. All right, for the Houston Gamblers, linebacker Reggie Northrup. Reggie Northrup, linebacker for the Houston Gamblers. Congratulations to him. Defensive end, David Blaney for the New Orleans Breakers. Congratulations to him. And finally, we got a defensive player on here, guys. The Maulers defense pulling through. Like I said, um, this will be a separate video. But the Maulers actually did get a defensive player of the week on here. Linebacker Kwan... I'm going to try to pronounce this one. Kwanva Tezino. So congratulations to him. Our defense pulled through. Like, we actually did pretty good. So congratulations to those guys. I'm glad the Maulers actually got a guy on there. That was pretty cool. Oh, so they actually even got on here special teams players of the week. Okay, this is cool. So Birmingham Stallions kicker Brandon Aubrey. So congratulations to him. Cornerback Will Likely for the Houston Gamblers. Congratulations to him. New Orleans Breakers wide receiver Chad Williams. Kicker Brandon Wright for the Tampa Bay Bandits. Oh my gosh, they, I will admit guys, their kicker is actually pretty good. Pretty sure it was actually their punter. He had a couple like really good punts. So I actually fully agree with that for the Tampa Bay Bandits. I will not lie. I fully agree with that one. So that was special teams players of the week. And finally, guys, I'm really not happy to see this one. It literally looks like we're repeating history from the 80s. Guys already know, USFL is back in the 80s. And the Maulers literally, I believe we were the first team to drop out of the USFL. We're the only team to drop out of the USFL. But I know we were the worst team in the USFL when we were around back then, so, oh my gosh. We're, this is just week one, so we have time to turn this around, guys. So here is the power rankings of week one. Tampa Bay Bandits are number one. They really came out striking. But the Maulers, our defense was able to put a stop to them. So if you think about it, I mean, I'm not saying that should move us up in the power rankings, but that we should definitely be talked about for one of the best defenses in the league, considering... If the Tampa Bay Bandits are number one in the power rankings and we were able to hold them to 17 points, we actually did pretty decent. They were on the field a lot and we stopped them. Defensive-wise, I think we played pretty decent. Um, number two, New Orleans Breakers. Number three, New Jersey Generals, which is actually interesting that they had the New Jersey Generals above the Stallions since the Stallions did win. But I actually kind of do agree with that because I do feel like the majority of that game not trying to take away the win from the Birmingham Stallions, but the majority of that game, I do feel like the New Jersey Generals had control of the game. Number four, Houston Gamblers. Number five, Birmingham Stallions. Number six, Philadelphia Stars. Number seven, Michigan Panthers. Number eight, Pittsburgh Maulers. So I actually, I will, I won't lie, actually, I do actually, I do agree with those. Actually, I do agree with those power rankings. I think they're pretty accurate. 
Uh, Tampa Bay at top, though. Like, I don't know. New Orleans Breakers at number two. So it looks like those teams are going to be pretty good. Tampa Bay Bandits, again, guys, you really can't rank these that great because this is only week one. So, of course, if they win week one, they're going to look really good. But who knows? They could tank the rest of the season. That's why. That's what makes football so interesting. That's just what makes sports so interesting in general. So, guys, what I read you earlier was all of the contenders for the players of the week. So, here's the actual player of the week. So, I guess, I don't know if they did, like, voting or anything or they just decided. But they had their final four for, obviously, defense, offense, and special teams. So, I'm going to read those off to you. So, offensive player of the week which is actually kind of surprising they chose this one. Jamar Smith, I can't deny it either because you, you can't deny it because he actually did do pretty good. He willed his team back to a win after they were, after, like I said, it really seemed like, it really seemed like the Generals had control most of the game, of the whole. They seemed like they had control the majority of the game. So congratulations to Jamar Smith. He is the first offensive player of the week. Defensive player of the week, David Bellamy. So that's for the New Orleans Breakers. It sounds like the New Orleans Breakers have a pretty good defense. They have a, looks like they have a star on their hands, but uh, I don't know. Like I didn't, I, can't, I didn't, again, I was having family over and stuff and I was getting ready. So I didn't necessarily like see much of this. I do know they did have a pretty decent pick. He might've been the one that got the pick. I could be wrong, but I don't know, because you also have to take into contention that guy for the New Jersey Generals. You have to take him into contention also, too. So I feel like that was a close race, but congratulations to David Bellamy. Special Teams Player of the Week. Oh my gosh, the Breakers got another player, Chad Williams, for their wide receiver. Congratulations to Chad. So right up here, guys, we got offensive stat leaders through week one. Brian Scott, 202 passing yards. Sheesh. DeAndre Johnson, 98 rushing yards. He's the Generals quarterback. And the Generals wide receiver, Randy Satterfield, has 100 receiving yards. So these guys are racking up stats already. Already a 200 passing yard game. So this is going to actually be pretty interesting to see. With that said, guys, I hope you all enjoy. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I did enjoy filming this video, and I enjoyed the USFL. It was very fun to watch. It was very fun to say my opinion to you guys. That's my opinion, and I think that with the drone camera angle, I think they did like use it less and less because they like week one they were really using it, and I just think it was like it was very like unstabilized in my opinion. And it, it sometimes the play wasn't necessarily in the angle. It was hard to focus on the play. But in the coaches thing, they fixed. They definitely fixed the coaches thing. And the games were overall very entertaining. They advertised them as like high scoring, very offensive games. And I don't know necessarily if that was true. Um, a lot of guys got a lot of stats. So I guess you could say necessarily, I guess you could say it kind of was very offensive. The games got in the 20s. The only game that was like really like low, low scoring was the Pittsburgh Maulers game, sadly. Um, Anyways, guys, I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I enjoyed it too. And let me know what you thought of the USFL. I thought it was very fun to watch. And just overall, I like the idea of the USFL. And I think it should be here to stay. I hope it doesn't go. The XFL is starting up next year. So they're going to actually have some like legitimate competition. I, I, like, I hate it when people say that this is competition to the NFL when it isn't. Because this is springtime. They're in fall time. There's no way like they're really competing. Competing. You know, they're not competing for viewers. So what's really going to be competing for viewers is the XFL and the USFL when they play next season. So that'll be interesting. I think the XFL starts up a little bit earlier than the USFL. So they might be kind of little bit separated. But I don't know, guys, we'll have to approach that next year. And that'll actually be very interesting next year when that does happen. A lot of people say they want to see a merger between the USFL and the XFL. I personally... I actually wouldn't be opposed to that because, well, I don't know. That's what the NFL did with the AFL. So this would be a good start to another league to have them both merge. And will that happen? Yeah, I don't know, guys. But I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.